If you're looking to improve your aim, then make sure to check out Control Freak and use the code OGXRACE to get 10% off all the products. Link in the description below. Yo guys, what's up? It's x -Rays. Welcome back to another Black Ops 4 video. So today I wanted to talk to you guys about a new Kotaku article that came out from Jason Schreier. And uh, this is a very interesting read and also a very sad read. But it has to do with Black Ops 4, the development of it, and how the staff feels behind the scenes. And uh, the article actually goes more into detail about the uh, contracted employees, so people who don't directly work for Treyarch, they're not on a payroll, they're paid via, you know, a certain amount of time, so if they work for a year, they're, they're a contracted employee for a year. And so, it's really interesting because they, uh, they actually talked to a lot of QA testers, and they did talk to some other staff and devs over at Treyarch who anonymously gave information, and uh, essentially, they talked about a lot of stuff that happened at the studio. They actually gave details on what Black Ops 4 was going to be prior to the big change that they had. And I kind of want to go through some of this, give you guys kind of like the summarized or, you know, Cliff Notes version of this. And if you guys want to read the full thing, you know, in case you don't want to just uh, get the little Cliff Notes, but you want to read the full thing, you can. It's a very long read, but I will link it down in the description for you guys that want to read it. So... Basically, the article starts off by talking about the QA testers and how uh, they were invited to a little party that Treyarch was having for new interns. And that 20 minutes into it, they were like, yeah, you guys got to go and get to work. And it basically sets the tone. It talks about how QA testers, and, and do keep in mind that months ago, there was actually a Q, uh, QA tester who ended up getting fired from Treyarch. And uh, he actually ended up going on, on Reddit, exposing a whole bunch of like Easter egg details for zombies and saying that there was going to be a Nuketown remaster that it was being worked on. Then he talked about a prequel map that was coming as DLC 1, which ended up being true, which was the uh, Dead of the Night map. And so uh, that guy proved out to be legit. Apparently he was getting sued by Treyarch. I don't know if that's true, but apparently he was getting sued. But, uh, you know, we already had kind of a uh, an idea back then. He talked about how he was being treated like crap that uh, he gave why he was fired, which was him saying that they were told your lunch is going to be at seven. Uh, he went to take his lunch at seven, came back. Turns out that it was pushed to eight o'clock. Uh, he came back and because he was on lunch when he wasn't supposed to, which again wasn't his fault because it was moved after he had already clocked out for lunch. He was fired because of that. Uh, and so he talked about how they weren't being treated fairly uh, when that Reddit article came out and he started leaking a whole bunch of information. And so that kind of it leads to this uh this article basically verifies what that guy was saying they were saying that the qa testers who are under contract are all put on the second floor that they were told that they cannot communicate with any of the developers uh and that you know but essentially they're their own little bubble inside this room that is too small for the amount of people who are in there and this all apparently got worse after that QA tester went on Reddit and started leaking stuff. And Treyarch was like, yep, now we got to cut him off completely from the rest of Treyarch. And so things got bad. They said that they uh, were working a ton of hours prior to Black Ops 4 coming out. That there was like insane crunch time. Uh, they talked a little a bit about what Black Ops 4 was prior to launch. And then when campaign was scrapped, I think they've already said... Uh, you know, they were saying that in a ton of articles that Black Ops 4 never was going to have a campaign. But this article basically confirms that, yes, there was going to be a campaign. It was a little too ambitious. They decided they didn't have enough time and they scrapped it. So we'll talk about that as well. But I wanted to talk about the QA testers because the, the majority of this article is about that. They talked about how the QA testers would have to work insane hours, 12-hour shifts, uh, that they had two teams. One would start at 10 and at 10 p.m. The other team would start, and I'm sorry if you guys can hear my dog. I don't know what the hell he's doing. But uh, the other ones would start at 10 p.m. and finish at 10 a.m. So they had basically people testing stuff for 24 hours straight. And these people who were overnight 10 p.m. to 10 a.m., uh, they would actually have to work under horrible conditions because it was like 100 degrees in that room and you know it was hot out in july and uh, the ac that was supposed to be for everyone would get turned off at 10 p.m so once triarch staff left they ended up having uh, the uh the actual acs turned off and they were literally roasting uh, and you know, cooking in a freaking room which really freaking sucks and that they were complaining and complaining and saying that guys this isn't working out the ac is not working and they were being told that the ac was broken which was complete crap 
And eventually, they started putting the AC on for them, but only when they remembered to keep it on at night. So these guys were going through horrible stuff. They weren't allowed to talk to anyone. They were just supposed to work. Uh, towards the end of the article, they talk about how uh, they basically did a revision to their contract where they were not going to get paid for any holidays, which uh, they said was uh, Christmas or uh, New, New Year's Eve, July 4th, stuff like that. Uh, but they wouldn't get their bonuses or paid vacation, or I should say paid holidays because they don't have paid vacation. But they would only get their paid holidays if they worked like 581 hours without being late or calling in sick. So that is insane. So with that said, let's go ahead and talk a little bit more about the actual development of Black Ops 4. I want to talk about that. So anyways, after that, uh, they talked a little bit about Black Ops 4's development. And so apparently the campaign was going to be a two versus two, uh, not co-op, but like two versus two uh, campaign where you try to complete missions. It actually sounds very similar to what Modern Warfare is trying to do with Spec Ops or the leaked info that we got for Modern Warfare Spec Op modes where you would have like team based stuff. So there's a bomb that you need to be defused. The other team tries to stop it or, you know, there's a target that needs to get assassinated. Uh, but apparently, these uh, little missions that they worked on uh, right before, I think it was New Year's Eve, and they ended up leaving and coming back. Apparently, the playtesters didn't like it, and uh, it just was not jiving well with everyone. So they decided, okay, we're going to have to scrap this, and we're going to have to make a completely new campaign using the same assets. Turned out that they didn't have enough time. And that's when they were like, crap, we don't have a campaign anymore. What do we do? And they were like, all right, we'll do a battle royale. And they ended up reusing some of those assets from the campaign and putting it in blackout. So it's a very interesting read when it comes to that, but apparently there was a campaign. It was supposed to be a two versus two, or if you were by yourself, it'd just be you against AI. But uh, it seemed like a very interesting uh, idea for a campaign. I actually kind of wish I had seen what it was like, but unfortunately it was scrapped due to constraints. Uh, and then after that, they said that they were working insane hours, uh, working six uh, days a week as opposed to five. And sometimes it was just straight up working nonstop for weeks on weeks and weeks on end. People were sleeping at the studio, insane stuff. So after this article came out, there actually was an update from Activision as well. And uh, they posted this, I think it was like at around 1 p.m. And I'll read what it says, but it was an email that they sent around to everyone else at the studio after this article came out. And this is what it says. So it said, team, today Kotaku published a story that explores a number of reported behind the scenes issues in Black Ops 4 development. The first and most important statement that we want to make to the team is that as managers of the studio, we take the well-being of every single individual working here very seriously. We have a vision for the future of this studio that includes significant improvement to work slash life balance. And we plan to achieve that through better project planning, streamlined production process, and a rigorous decision-making timeline. It's also our intention to maintain our commitment to increase transparency. Getting there will require time, hard work, and commitment. Most of all, it will require open communication. If you feel like your needs aren't being met, please do not hesitate to communicate actively with your manager. No one should ever feel like they don't have options, can't talk openly, or that the only choice to take your concerns uh, is to the public. These conversations should always start with an honest dialogue with your department manager, and if that's not working, feel free to reach out to one of us. Game development is widely complex art, and it requires a diverse set of people and skill set to do it successfully. It's important for all of us to foster a studio culture that treats all team members with respect. We appreciate the contribution made by all members of the team in the name of this game we make. Sincerely, Dan and Mark. Now, the other thing I wanted to mention that I didn't touch upon here was actually talking about the microtransaction stuff. Uh, and this is a little bit extra, but they said that the people, the developers, the lower end staff, that they hated what Activision was doing, that they were forcing them to put in all these microtransactions and trying to suck everyone dry of their money. So, I mean, we don't know, guys. We're, I'm always seeing people roasting the developers at Trek or just roasting COD developers in general. And you don't see that stuff. You don't see people who are busting their ass, working horrible hours. Maybe, I, I, I don't know if it's true, but I heard a rumor that one of the developers actually had to get divorced because he wasn't spending enough time with his family, which is insane. And, you know, you don't know what kind of conditions they're living at. They're literally living a living hell with the development of Black Ops 4. And then on top of that, Activision's like, well, I don't care. You have to sell all this crap. And then, you know, Activision's not the one getting tweeted out. Activision's not the one getting roasted. It's Treyarch getting roasted by all of us, including myself. Like, I myself put myself in there 
before I used to be like, it's just Activision. And then I started saying like, no, Trek is involved in this also. You know, why is it that they're the only studio that gets abused this much? But, you know, those developers go through hell. And, you know, it doesn't help when we go after Treyarch. We should be going after Activision. And hopefully the conditions get better. I don't know how they're going to pull a game out of their ass when it comes to 2020. I hope they're able to do it. And I hope it's not something that leads a lot of them to horrible anxiety and depression. Because making a game ain't easy. And then when you're pushing against anything and everything to make this game, it just makes it that much worse. And it compounds and becomes a horrible, horrible situation. So I'm really hoping that... They uh, have better communication, better management, and that this all works out for them. Uh, but yeah, I just wanted to talk about that, guys, because this is a pretty big article. Everyone was talking about it. Let me know what you guys think about it down in the comment section below. But anyways, thank you guys so much for watching the video. Hopefully, you guys did enjoy the video. If you did, drop a like on the video, guys. It's super appreciated, incredibly helpful. And if you are new to the channel, if you want to see even more videos like these, I'm going to have a lot more Call of Duty Black Ops 4 news and forward rumors leaks and more coming. So make sure you guys are subscribed and have those notifications on so you don't miss a single upload if you guys want to support the channel directly you guys can do so by checking out my channel memberships you get access to early content exclusive videos special badges and more and last but not least if you guys want to talk about anything twitter is the best place to do so go ahead and give me a follow over there at ogx series you guys have an awesome day take care i'm out peace